Hello all. Today I am going to talk about how to create a test recommendation engine and how we can leverage predictive analytics which is a common machine learning way of identifying things. Now before talking about the recommendation engine I would first like to talk about what are the problem statements. So there are two problem statements majorly that are being challenged and asked in day to day testers life. One is exhaustive testing and second is that your tests are taking time. When I talk about exhaustive testing, many of us wants to run their regression for any of the change that may happen in the code. But that is not always possible because of the lack of time. So what many of us do is only do targeted regression. Secondly, we always hear this that your tests are taking time and uh, the pipeline is always affecting the engineering productivity. Why is that so? Is because many of our automation pack takes larger time to provide the feedback to the developers and hence that's a challenge. So what we can do? So we can develop a probabilistic model for identifying which tests to run from the regression for a particular code change. Now, how can we create this probabilistic model? Uh, let me talk about that. So what are the common approaches here? One of the common approach that uh, folks take is collate the historic information that, are, that got produced through the execution and push it to a centralized location and create a central dashboard. That central dashboard provides different ways of correlating the historical historic execution information and that basically uh, tells that what are the tests that should be executed when there is a code change. Now it does not trans correlates between the code change and uh, the amount of tests. It just tells you that if there is a build what are the likelihood or likely possible test cases that we should execute. Second approach that is most common is that we take the meta information of the build. That is you basically analyze the, the build tool and the output of the build tool and that output of the build tool then correlate with the unit test execution. So if you have unit tests, what you can do is you can run those unit tests and when the build tool will perform the build, you basically take that meta information and then start taking the correlation of it. The other common approach that we have is the static change impact analysis. Now, what happens in here is that a lot of people would do, will instrument the code and will create statistics out of the code coverage and the code quality. Uh, of the particular code change. Now what they do is they basically takes that information and correlate uh, the tests that gets executed that generate that code analysis. So and it's it's widely being used as one of the uh, common approach to basically do the test selection. So what happens here is that if there is four lines of code change you know you will definitely tell you you know which are the tests that you you can basically execute now you can use tools like open clover or you can do a jvm instrumentation to basically get that instrumentation data uh, and then you correlate with the execution data and then uh, you can identify if there is a code x uh, four lines of code changed then what are the tests that get executed now this has got some issues because uh, if your code base is huge and it's it's millions lines of codes, uh, sometimes it uh, is not the right way to go about this approach. So what we do is we combine this with the fourth approach, which is like you can identify the failure of the tests and the likelihood of that test failing in your regression pack if there is any code change. So what we do here is that so if you look at the particular diagram, uh, we, we go through two steps here. One is the model training and one is the model prediction. 
So what we do is we combine the approach three and four. So we instrument the code base, uh, we execute the tests, and what we do is we ingest the coverage, the quality, and execution data into the DB or any common place, and then create a test selection recommendation engine uh, on that basis. This also takes inputs of your manual execution cycle as well and basically do a collaborative filtering over the data and you can create a recommendation model. Now what we do is once you create this model, you can then start predicting against any code change in your database. So you basically when the code change happens, you take that meta information, run through the test selection recommendation model and what it would do, it will tell you the, the tests that you would need to run and then ingest that test selection information so that you can retrain the model and make it more accurate. We have seen that an accuracy more than 95% is good, uh, which basically uh, gives you a likelihood that, you know, around uh, close to 100% accurate results would come over time. Now there is another way uh, for prediction that you can basically make through the engine which is that you, if there is a code change, you execute the test like you did in the model training and then you pass the information to the test selection model and now it will tell you that what is the failure probability of those executed tests uh, are and uh, that is how you can basically see uh, if those tests are actually the actual tests that should be there in your regression pack. Now I understand that it is quite a little technical, but um, you can always connect with me to get more heuristic approach and uh, the, the, the detailed approach, uh, how to create this. Um, but I would like to talk about something about the model. One is uh, that, you know, we used a standard machine learning algorithm, which is a gradient boosted decision tree model. Uh, decision tree is why because it is simpler to work with and it is visually very simple to understand if there is a change somewhere where are the other areas that gets would get impacted so a particular code change will find all the impacted tests and identify the likelihood of failure so this is what I have you know this will just give you some idea about how you can design your test recommendation engine and what all information do you need to create that particular thing. Uh, I thank Testflix for giving me this opportunity to quickly tell you how you can uh, create the test recommendation engine and thank you very much and all the best.